you know it depends on you you know anybody can lazy through life and be wondering why things are bad for him and things will not change even when you're angry with God you can't find him you know to rebuke him if you like you can talk and be angry at God you can even tell him you don't exist he won't respond <laughs> He's too big for that. He wouldn't respond. He wouldn't even be offended at you. Because you're too small. But if you want to take advantage of his blessings, he's ready. So in life you always have those who look around and wonder why things aren't changing for them. And then they say, well, they think those who are preaching prosperity are deceiving them or are deceiving people. <laughs> okay, if they are deceiving people, have they deceived you? If they haven't deceived you, then what's your business? Leave them alone. Praise God. We just had, we just had a beautiful testimony. You heard that testimony, right? You know, it's possible that you could have also had somebody who came for that conference and that person would say well I was in the conference I didn't get anything someone might even say I sowed seeds and I sowed seeds and I sowed seeds the only thing I got was I lost my money you know there are people like that it's like people who say they have tested Christianity they say it doesn't work they say I used to be a Christian I even I even spoke in tongues Then they say it doesn't work. Some say I was in church. I was a very dedicated person. I was a mass, I was a mass server. It didn't change anything. Well, maybe that was your experience. Because you didn't know what to do with it. Hey, let's look at this. Let's be serious. Are you there? There are some people in this world who went to all the schools they needed to go to and that they wanted to go to from the lowest levels to the highest levels and they have three PhDs. Do you understand? Three PhDs. Professors. But very poor. Stinkingly poor. Broke and sad. Broke and sad, very sad. They have three PhDs. They've gone to the best schools. They had friends. But they are broke, very unhappy. Their children are grown and broke. So he can say education doesn't work. He should say so too. Why? Well, after all, he went to school and came back broke. So he should say education doesn't work. But that is for him. Because there are others who did the same thing and they're pretty fine. So those ones will disagree with him. Right? They will disagree with him. If you got into a car, like you see many cars outside, then your own car breaks down, stops on the way. You don't know what's wrong. Now you can't move from there. You say cars don't work. Cars don't work. Cars don't work. I've always said it. Cars don't work. These manufacturers are cheating everybody. Cars don't work. Because your own car broke down. Maybe you didn't know what to do with your car. You may have mismanaged your car. You're not the only one with that type of car. There are other people. Why are their own moving and yours is not moving? 
Why don't you find out from those whose cars are moving, what are they doing? They may be doing something right. So, question is, what did you do with your Christianity? What did you do with the Holy Spirit? What did you do with the teaching that you were given? What did you do with the message that you heard? How did you act on it? Did you know that Jesus went to Nazareth to minister to the sick and they didn't get healed? Some of you have never heard that. Jesus? Yes, it's in the Bible. Every other place, miracles happened. But when he came to the place, they knew him the most. He was supposed to at least really show them the power of God in that place. He wanted to. That's why he went there. He went there to heal them. He is even named with that place. Jesus of Nazareth. Nobody ever said Jesus of Capernaum. Jesus of Jerusalem. No, they said Jesus of Nazareth. Now he went to Nazareth, commanded blind eyes to open. They didn't open. Touch the lame. He didn't get up. Deaf ears refused to open. None of, none of those kind of miracles took place. Finally, the Bible says he had to pray for those ones that had headaches, colds, and fever. <laughs> it's there. Read your Bible. And of course, he didn't quite list them out like this, but he gave us a general. Let me. Okay, maybe I should read it to you. <laughs> so, Mark's Gospel, chapter six. I know many of you know it's there, but some are thinking that, ah, I've never heard this. Okay. There are many things you've never heard. Okay. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 6, from verse 1. Put it on the screen. Everybody must see it. <laughs> and he went out from things. That means he went out from there. You know, King James as uh, a special language. He went out from thence and came into his own country. Alright? And his disciples follow him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man learn all these things? You see that? Okay, and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Next verse Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? In case you didn't know the other children that were born of Mary, this is the list. <laughs> you can write them down now, you know them. Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. They said, Look at this man is deceiving us. We know him. He says he's from heaven. We know his brothers and sisters. He says he's from God. We know his mother. We know his father. Their house is on our street. <laughs> so they were angry. They were offended at him. Next verse. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Next verse. And he, read, everybody read that. Okay, now listen to the language carefully. He could there do no mighty work. Now what is called mighty work? Mighty works in the Bible are the blind receiving sight, the deaf hearing, the lame walking, the dumb speaking, the lepers being cleansed, and the dead being raised. These are what you know as mighty works in the Bible. Okay? Alright. Now, the next part says, 
First of all, he says he could, he could there do no mighty work. He couldn't. Not he wouldn't. If they had written, he would there do no mighty work, meaning that he was offended and he didn't want to do it, so he went away. Now he says he couldn't because it means he tried, it didn't work. Why? You would see it soon. It says, say that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Now, the margin says, upon a few with minor ailments. Minor ailments. So when you read the Greek, it says minor ailments. A few with minor ailments that he healed. Next verse. This will show you that he tried. He marveled because of their unbelief. You know what that means? Imagine Jesus saying, receive your sight. And man's eyes are still closed. Receive your sight. When Jesus says, see. Say, I can't see anything at all. He turns to the other one and says, rise. Take up your bed and walk. The same thing he did everywhere else. And they sprang up. Now he says, rise. He says, hold on, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm trying. And Jesus says, rise. He says, hold on now. The Bible says, he marveled. Ha! What type of people are these? He marveled because of their unbelief. What did he do? See. And he went round about the villages teaching. Because teaching is the cure for unbelief. You see it? When people have difficulty believing, you then have to teach them. Because they don't understand. So you have to explain to them. You have to help them. So Jesus went teaching. To help them build faith. Praise the Lord. Okay. You're still there? So sometimes you know people say Jesus had 100% result. The only way he had 100% result was 100% result for those that had faith. And it didn't work for those who didn't. Didn't you read what he said? Your faith has made you whole. He never said my faith has healed you your faith and when it didn't work he marveled at their unbelief it was he was not the problem the power was the same all the time even when he was not a part of the healing the woman came from behind him and touched his garment and was healed and jesus said who touched me jesus didn't plan to heal her she touched him from behind and was healed that was nearly, that was the only time that Jesus was touched. Several other occasions, the Bible says many touched him and they were healed. So it wasn't whether or not he was planning. No, God put the power in him, so he had that power. He had the ability. He was the Son of God in truth. And if you believed, you received from him. Praise God. So now, God's word works. God's word works. Now let's look at it again. Romans chapter 4 verse 17.